I didn't even expect to be an Imperial potentate, but here I am ready to go. My childhood was an ideal childhood. Uh, the middle of three sons, the loving parents, a great town to grow up in. The entrance to our town only has one entrance because we live in the sand dunes of Lake Michigan. My grandmother that lived with us, my mother's mother, and very astute businesswoman. She went to work every day. Uh, the family owned a Buick car dealership in Gary, Indiana. And she went off to work with my father every day. Three years after I was born, my brother Bill was born. And as I call him Little Billy, as my mother called him Willie Lump Lump, uh, we had a wonderful family. And then seven years after my birth, my brother James was born. My father made sure that we understood that he probably didn't want us in the car business, but he wanted us to follow our own path and discover what we wanted to do best. And so after graduating from the University of Evansville, uh, where I got my undergraduate degree. I also went to the University of Kentucky and got my master's in vertebrate zoology. Looking for something in the medical field, went into medical sales, did that for a number of years, and then switched over, joined my brother as his partner in a brokerage firm in downtown Chicago where we sell commercial investment real estate. I was born in Chicago, and at about age four, we moved into a suburb of Chicago Heights, just south of Chicago. I went to Illinois State University to become a teacher. I taught for 33 years. It was uh, my junior year in college that I moved off campus and moved into an apartment complex. And that was Debbie's first time teaching the visually impaired. And she and I were in the same apartment complex. And I actually could see uh, her door from, from my window and just kept seeing this cute young girl. We became friends and um, things just clicked after a while and getting to know one another. Finally, we started dating. So it took some time to make it work, but uh, we stuck through it. Uh, I'm not sure why she stuck through it with me, but she did. He was very clever, and at Christmas time, he gave me this great big package with lots of boxes inside. I want, and so I was very thrilled when I opened it up and found an engagement ring in it. Well, I guess I would say it. In having the two boys, Bill was a great example of a father. I just am very thankful for having such strong and, and caring parents. Um, they really taught me a lot of life lessons about um, dedication and, and uh, thoughtfulness and thinking of others. And seeing them in the shrine was always a big part of me growing up. We're very fortunate to have parents that were extremely involved. Uh, those are the memories that, you know, I really enjoy is uh, sitting down around the dinner table and recounting the days and dad would always ask, you know, tell you know, rather than tell me, what, you know, how was school, you know, tell me three good things that happened to you today. Just, all, you know, trying to put that positive spin on, on your day. From where we live, you can actually see downtown Chicago. There's only 690 homes in the entire town. Growing up here in Ogden Dunes, we had an opportunity as a family to be together on all occasions. We're fortunate to be right here on the cusp and the south tip of Lake Michigan. Um, you know, some of our biggest memories as a family were going down to the beach with uh, my brother Rob and mom and dad, and spending all you know all weekend there. And frankly, it seemed like all summer there. The second family that we have is our church family, and uh, we've been very involved in, in the Ogden Dunes Community Church. It's all volunteer. 
And so we all pitch in and do what we need to do to make it a, a successful church. They are just about serving others, helping others, and sharing their faith with others. Uh, Baileys are just tremendous people, and, and you're going to hear a common theme as you talk to people about service and about their incredible empathy toward others. Their willingness, not only willingness, but it's almost a drive for them to serve other people. All these years that I have known him and, and Debbie, I'm just, I feel blessed to call them friends. And I feel that the Shriners International will be very blessed to have him as their leader and Debbie as their first lady. We are very proud of the fact that we are the only second father-son team as Imperial potentates. My father saw me sworn in as Imperial Outer Guard and I thought I was happy. And he was overjoyed, as a father would be. And it was quite an experience to be able to inherit his passion and his vision of helping children and helping the fraternity to be better than what it was in his day. Uh, my father, uh, being involved in Scottish Rite, uh, he had told us he wants us to experience all the different uh, branches of the Masonic family. And so we all did. Uh, my younger brother Jim and I went through the Blue Lodge together. And then Jim went on to become uh, president of the Great Lakes Shrine Association and was president in, in 2009, and the same time that I was potentate of Orac Shrine in 2009. And unfortunately, Jim, uh, who was the, uh, the third of the Musketeers, uh, left us a number of years ago and has a hole in our heart, but never in our memories. Jim was uh, a terrific Mason and a terrific Shriner, and he and Bill were the closest of close could be. Still feels like a major loss. And then one day I went to the divan of Orac Shrine and I said, what would you think if we ran for the Imperial line? So Debbie and I ran, we didn't win the first year, we didn't win the second year. And most people think that you're going to, to quit after that. And you'd feel sorry for yourself. But then we would hear one of the national patient ambassadors talk about the struggles that they went through. And, and overcoming those struggles. And I quit being sorry for myself. So I would come back and Debbie and I get back on the road and campaign. And I'm grateful for their, their support and the, the being elected to the Imperial Outer Guard. Well, I, I haven't known Bill as long as some of the guys in our shrine have, but, uh, but he comes from a long line, a, a legacy of uh, Imperial potentates. His whole family, his dad Bob, his brother Jim, were always so dedicated to the shrine and the shrine cause, the philanthropy of the hospital. Their dedication is unmatched with anybody I've ever known. And I mean, Bill Bailey's heart has always been in it. I've, I've always admired that in, in Bill. And Bill is a strong leader and has been involved with many appendant bodies and shown the leadership skills. Always a smile, but behind each good man, is our lady, and Lady Debbie is fantastic. Oh, it doesn't get any better than this. His dad, again, uh, was Imperial Potentate the day I came into the shrine and to serve with Bill and for Bill, and now have Bill be the Imperial Potentate. Um, very proud, and the entire shrine here, his home, is extremely proud to have Bill um, as the Imperial Potentate of all Shriners everywhere. The story that got me the most 
It was when my mom and dad came home and told me about a visit to a shrine hospital. And they saw a little boy sitting on the exam table and he was wiggling his feet back and forth and they could tell that he was a double amputee. And you think about what they don't have. And the mother stopped my mother who was about to cry and said, you don't understand, he's happy. That was the first hook that we really understood what mom and dad were talking about, the difference that the shrine had made. And, and he encouraged me to become a nurse because he believes in, in health care. And, and I am where I am today because of his encouragement. And so I think the hospital system, above all, is, is at my dad's fourth thought constantly. My grandmother had uh, severe scoliosis. My uncle Jim had scoliosis. My father has a bit of scoliosis. And so it's, it's something that, that we're aware of. And uh, these, you know, these children, they, we just want them to be children. You know, that's what they deserve. You know, they get to go play. And uh, I, you know, I see that with uh, my son, you know, running in the yard right now. And uh, there are children that are learning to run in a different way. Connor, Hi. what are you doing here? Hi, how are you guys? Hello, nice to see you. Nice to see you guys too. Thanks for coming out to the hospital today. I uh, took a day off school to show you guys my day at the hospital and I'm so happy to see you guys. It's been a while. And what is in here? This is where they take all my x-rays before, after, and going into surgeries. First, I step up onto this machine and I will sit in here. And this circles around my head and it takes a panoramic of my whole skull. He ran over my son. Oh, do you see me stepping on your name? Well, I, we're very proud of you. That the fact that you're you're in college now, and I have a present for you. <laughs> and I, I, I want you to know, I spared no expense thinking about your college future. So I want you to have this. Also, a pencil. Uh, it's a broken pencil. It, I spared no <laughs> expense on that. Don't worry about it. I'll show it. Just the look on your face alone tells me exactly what you this think means, of that present. This means a lot to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about a, your experience with Shriners Hospitals for Children. Absolutely. So I've been going to the hospital in Chicago since I was two months old. I suffer from osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as brittle bone disease. I've broken over 60 bones in my lifetime, but we kind of lost count. So it's a good ballpark. <laughs> but I go to the hospital for physical therapy, surgeries, consultations. Um, sometimes when I need a family to rely on, Shriners Hospitals for Children has just always been there for me. And you've met one or two Shriners in your lifetime uh, <laughs> across the country. Uh, what is the Shrine Fraternity meant to you? Uh, the Shrine Fraternity, Whenever I see a Shriner, whenever I see a Fez, I know that I see a man who I can rely on. I know I see a guy who is amazing, who has done so much for me, and who is willing to do anything for me. Um, the shrine, Shriner's fraternity and the Fez, it means everything to me. I, I hope to become a Shriner later on in life. Uh, I don't know if that's in the near future. I don't know if that's in a couple of years, but uh, I want to be a Shriner when I grow up. Yes, I've been fortunate to know both of the Baileys. I've been with the organization almost three decades, and Bill's dad, Bob, was a leader <clears throat> during that time and uh, showed the same, or demonstrated the same consistency and genuineness and compassion that Bill shows today. The message Debbie and I are trying to get across to everybody is that this is not our year. This is the year of the noble. This is the celebration of the 100th anniversary of Shriners Hospitals for Children and the 150th anniversary of Shriners International. We want to, to do as much as we can to raise uh, membership and let people know that the fun and fellowship that there is within the Shrine. And we want the ladies to encourage new nobles to come to the temple, meet different um, clubs or units, and find their little sink. And if you don't have one, 
Encourage your husband to form a new group. He sets the example, people follow. He has always had a smile. He and Lady Debbie always have a smile when they greet people. It makes him easy to follow. I am very, very proud of him. He's a hard worker. He's well organized. I love to listen to him speak when he's in front of a group because he, he speaks from the heart. I'm very proud of my parents. I'm, I'm so happy for them uh, for making it this far. It's a long journey. I think my father's gonna leave behind a legacy of dedication. And I think that Shriners are dedicated. They're passionate. And I think that my dad is, is above and beyond. My mom, she's so caring and wonderful. I couldn't imagine uh, being raised by a better mother. Well, I, I, I hope that uh, he continues his legacy of fun. Uh, that's all, you know, he's always been a lot of fun. Certainly uh, hope that it'll be a legacy of service and giving back to the fraternity and, and providing an opportunity to those that will follow him. Incredibly grateful, you know, to be their son. I think they've, you know, done a wonderful job personally, uh, but I'm now excited to see them them grow in, into their uh, into their roles as Imperial Potentate and the First Lady of Shriners International. What's most important is that you leave them financially more secure, but you also try to grow both the hospitals and the fraternity and make them stronger because we want this to last for the next 100 years and the next 150 years beyond this and hopefully be the kind of son my father wants me to be, the kind of brother my brothers want me to be, and uh, be the kind of father my sons want me to be. So it's an awesome responsibility, and at some point in time, it's my turn to turn around and support everybody else. <laughs>